Keeping your wife in an ivory tower won't ensure you her devotion. Once she gets tired of it, neither your money nor your guns will hold her. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Uh, I'm going back to my room. You sure you want to have another drink? No, no, thanks. Meet you downstairs in the morning. I'll be ready. Good night. Good night, Jeremiah. Mr. Paladin. Hello, Miss Wong. Oh, may I please turn down the bed now? Yes, come in, Miss Wong. Oh. Oh, and if you don't mind, you can help me pack before you leave. You go away again so soon? It looks that way, Miss Wong, first thing in the morning. Oh, you be gone long time? Hard to tell. It's such an unusual job. How so? Do you see that man who left my room? Yes, sir. He's a very famous man, or was at one time. Jeremiah Smoot. Or Jeremiah the Avenger, they used to call him. Oh, why was he famous? He was the man with a lightning draw, the fastest gun this side of the Mississippi, feared by every gunfighter in the West. And you know what he wants me for? No. Why he wants you, Mr. Paladin? He wants me to be his bodyguard. Oh. Oh. <laughs> This is the cold season. What do medical authorities say about the common cold? Doctors tell us there's no known drug which will cure a cold. There are effective medications for treating complications, accompanying or following a cold. If you've been taking sensible precautions and still have one cold after another, it's best to see your doctor. And here's another important health tip. When you have a cold and need a laxative, that's the time to rely on gentle X-lax. Pleasant-tasting, chocolated X-Lax helps you toward your normal regularity gently overnight. X-Lax gets along with any cold remedies you may be taking. And X-Lax works where nature wants, in the lower tract, not the stomach. X-Lax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset, no urgency or discomfort. Next morning, you're well on your way toward your normal regularity. So when you have a cold and need a laxative, take X-Lax, the laxative you can use with complete confidence. X-Lax helps you toward your normal regularity gently overnight. X-Lax. I must admit I was intrigued with the irony of the situation. Jeremiah the Avenger, the man who could take care of himself and any other man in the West, hiring me to protect him, from himself as it worked out. The reasons for his strange action were revealed as we rode south through the Salinas Valley on our way to his spread. We were the only two passengers left on the stage after King City, and at last he could speak freely. See, Paladin, I hung up my guns when I got married. That's what Polly wanted, and Polly's what I wanted, so we up and did it. Came out here from West Texas, started this spread down the Chaboscos, and everything worked out fine. Nobody knew who I was, or who Polly was, for that matter. Who was she? Well, if you must know, she was an entertainer at the bird cage in Abilene. Oh, I see. Well, them kind often make the best wives. Yeah, so I've heard. Well, Polly did. All right. You got no cause making any remarks about her. Look, Jerry, I, I wasn't making any remarks. I was agreeing with you. No need for you to be so touchy. Yeah, I guess maybe I am, am I? It's all the fault of this here neighbor of mine, this Ezra Mason. What has he got to do with your being touchy? Oh... Seemed like he finds some excuse to drop in over to my place almost every day, say howdy to my wife. Nothing you can put your finger on, really, but I, I don't trust him. Now, that's what I'm paying you for, Paladin, to straighten this thing out. And if I tried to, I only know one way, with a 45. I can't do that, because I promised Polly I was through with gunplay from the minute I slipped that ring on her finger. And I mean to keep that promise. You sound like a mighty devoted husband, Jerry. Devoted? I just told you I hung up my guns for Polly. But for me, that was doing a lot. Yes, it was, Jeremiah. An awful lot. Oh, 
Senor. Senor. Oh, howdy, Stephen. This here Senor Paladin going to stay with us a spell. How are Senor. You? Uh, Stephen, anything happened whilst I was away? No, Senor. All has been quiet. No visitors? No, Senor. None. Good. All right, you take care of the horses, Stephen. Come on, Paladin. I want you to meet the little woman. Tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston gives you real flavor, full, rich tobacco flavor. Winston's easy drawing too. The flavor comes right through to you. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. A modern filter? Sure, Winston has it. But that's only the beginning of a Winston. Up front. Up where it really counts, Winston packs exclusive filter blend. Light, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. Filter blend. That's why it's fun to smoke Winston, America's best-selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Although Jeremiah had prepared me for a great deal, he had not done his wife Polly justice. She was beautiful, frail, blonde, her skin almost translucent to a white orchid. She received me in the darkened living room of the hacienda where her paleness seemed to shine, where the windows were heavily curtained from the midday sun and only a glimmer of daylight retreated before the steady glow of the candles which surrounded her chair like a shrine. You must forgive me for not meeting you outside, Mr. Paladin. That's all right, ma'am. I never go out of doors in the daylight. Yeah, she freckles too easy. <laughs> yes, Jeremiah. I fear your Polly will always be a night bird. <laughs> uh, Miss Paladin's from San Francisco, Polly. I asked him to stop and visit with us a spell. Oh, how nice. How is San Francisco, Mr. Paladin? Is it as gay as they say? Well, yes, I suppose it is. How long has it been since you've been there? Oh, I've never been there, but I've always dreamed of going. Jeremiah keeps promising to take me, but he never does. Perhaps you would show me San Francisco someday, Mr. Paladin? Uh, yes, of course, Mrs. Smoot. Uh, before you do, Paladin, I'd just like to direct your attention to that wall over there by the fireplace. Ah, yes, the guns. That's right. They're beauties. That's where I hung them when Polly made me promise not to use them. Don't you be doing nothing to make me want to break that promise. <laughs> Jeremiah, I was only joking when I asked Mr. Paladin to show me San oh, Francisco. I know you were. I just want to make sure he knows it. <laughs> well, we better get along and let you take your beauty nap, Polly. Yes, Jeremiah. We'll be looking in on you long about sundown. Yes, about sundown. I come alive at nightfall, Mr. Paladin. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> See what I mean, Paladin? A regular lady. Yes, indeed. There's nothing I wouldn't do for her, except break my promise to take down my gun. That's why I keep him over in her place. Her place? Don't you live there, too? No, no, no. I sleep in the main house. She asked for her own separate wing, and she got it. And uh, it works out real nice, you know. Sort of exciting when you have to call on your own wife. Yes, I suppose it would be. <laughs> Just as long as I'm the only one that's calling. And that's where I come in. That's right. you got to break up her friendship with Mason before I'm forced to kill him and lose Polly into the bargain. I'll get to work on it this afternoon. After lunch, I saddled up and rode over alone to pay a visit on Ezra Mason. I found him out by his corral. A younger man than Jeremiah, I must admit, a better-looking man... And I soon discovered a man who was none too friendly. Mind stating your business? No, not at all. I appear to be lost. I thought you might be able to give me some directions. Where are you going? Well, I'm looking for Jeremiah the Avenger. Jeremiah the Avenger? Who's he? You mean to say you've never heard of him? Huh, not likely. I'd have remembered a name like that. Well, he was a famous gunfighter. He had a draw like lightning. Is that a fact? No. Yeah. Nothing ever seen like old Jeremiah. But I hear he got himself married and promised his wife he'd quit gunfighting. Heard he got himself a spread out in these parts. 
I never heard of no Jeremiah the Avenger around here. Oh, well, of course, he did have a regular name. Smoot, it was. Smoot? There's a... There's a Jerry Smoot on down the valley apiece. Well, that must be him. Yeah, oh, but he doesn't look like no gunfighter to me. He got himself a young wife? Yeah. Name of Polly? Yeah. Pretty? Why, well, I'd, I'd say so. Oh, friend, you better not say so where Jeremiah can hear you. Why not? When he put up his guns, like Polly asked him, he vowed there was only one reason he'd ever take him down again. Why is that? To kill the man who tried to take his wife away from him. They don't call him Jeremiah the Avenger for nothing. He's mean. Nasty mean. Jealous. Well, uh, on down the valley, you say, huh? Thanks for the directions, friend. Dandruff bothers most men, most women, too. So listen. Today, you can get rid of embarrassing dandruff in just three minutes. Yes, with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. That's not all. Using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And never forget, gentle Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. Although the lovely Polly claimed to be a night bird, she did not last long that evening and retired to her quarters shortly after supper. Jeremiah and I were too tired to be very entertaining, so we turned in early and I fell immediately into a deep sleep. Some time later, I was awakened by the sound of shots. I jumped out of bed, pulled out my trousers, and rushed into the patio. There in the moonlight lay the still body of Ezra Mason, and crouching over it, the huge frame of Jeremiah. He made no effort to deny that he had shot and killed Ezra Mason, and he wanted to give himself up. So he saddled up and rode into town to see the sheriff. So you finally up and did it, Jeremiah. Reckon so, Sheriff. Tried to hold on to my promise. Even hired Paladin here to keep me from my guns, but... It weren't no good... You see a dirty sneak heading in your wife's direction, you shoot first and talk after. Well, you had it coming to him, I reckon. Of course, I'm going to have to hold you without bail, Jeremiah. Yeah, I understand. But you'll be out of here mighty quick. You don't have to be no learned judge to know a man's got a right to protect his property. <laughs> you know something, Sheriff? It don't really seem to matter now. What don't matter? Whether judge lets me go or, or the boys string me up. I just don't care. Just don't seem to care. Sure, sure. Well, you get some sleep now, Jerry, and don't you worry none. Come on, Fallon. Good night, Jeremiah. Yeah, poor fellow's upset. Can't blame him, though, killing a man in cold blood. That never upset Jeremiah the Avenger before, Sheriff. Jeremiah the Avenger? Yeah, that's right. I keep forgetting the reputation he used to have. I don't think he killed Mason. Oh, he admits to it. He had plenty of motive. He, why, he even warned me. Told me weeks ago that if Mason didn't stop hanging around his place, there'd be trouble. I know. But he also was so afraid he'd break his word and put on his guns again that he hired me to keep him out of trouble. Still, there he was when you found him, standing over the body, holding his own gun in his hand. And that's true. That's all the evidence any judge or jury would need. And it's all circumstantial, isn't it? Well, yeah. All right. Then listen to some more evidence. Inferential evidence. Jeremiah was known to be the deadliest shot in the West, wasn't he? That's right. He never took more than one round to finish off his opponent. He was a great artist. Ezra Mason was murdered by an amateur, a butcher of bullets. What do you mean? Three shots were fired into him, two completely missing the vital areas, one in the leg, one in the shoulder. Now, if the third bullet, a lucky blow, hadn't gone through the brain, Mason would be alive this minute. No, Sheriff. You can never convince me that such inept marksmanship was the work of Jeremiah. Well, if he didn't do it, who did? 
Maybe I can find out for you, Sheriff. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos. Corn chips, it's not polite to smack your lips. But you can't help it with Fritos corn chips. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos. Corn chips. Fritos are the perfect after-school or between-meal snack. Golden chips of corn just made to munch. A nutritious treat for children and grown-ups alike. Fritos corn chips are full of such good crisp flavor, such good for you nourishment. There's contentment in every munch. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos corn chips. Whenever you want good munching, get Fritos corn chips. Whenever you want to add zip to a lunchbox, to salad, soup, or sandwiches, serve Fritos corn chips. They're America's favorite golden chips of corn just made to munch. F-R-I-T-O-S, Fritos corn chips. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos corn chips. Polly was still awake when I got back to the ranch. I found her lying back on her chaise longue, surrounded by flickering candles. On the wall by the fireplace hung Jeremiah's gun belt, and as I expected, one of the guns was missing from its holster. The sheriff arrested him? Oh, yes. Took his confession, locked him up. What will they do to him? Oh, not a great deal. He'll get out. He'll get out? Yeah. The unwritten law. The right of a man to protect his home and family... Uh, aren't you relieved? No. You hate your husband, don't you? Of course I hate him. He, he treated me like the livestock, like a special and rare specimen. Polly his nightbird, he called me. He gave me everything I asked for, only... only I didn't love him. But you did love Ezra Mason. Yes, and he loved me. Or I thought he did until tonight. And when you found he didn't, you killed him. I didn't kill him. Jeremiah killed him. He confessed to it. The sheriffs arrested him for it. He confessed to protect you. Mason was killed with one of Jeremiah's guns, the one that's missing from that holster on the wall there. Now, he couldn't have used it. He was asleep in the main house. You shot Mason, dropped the gun by his body, and ran back here. Jeremiah was wakened by the noise. So was I. And I found him standing over the body, holding the gun, because that's the way he wanted to be found. He knew you had shot Mason, but he wanted it to look like he did. I may have shot him, but Jeremiah killed him. No, that doesn't make much sense. Do you know why Ezra Mason came here tonight? No, but I can guess. He came here to say goodbye, to call the whole thing off. He was walking out on me. Why? Because he loved himself more than he did me, just like Jeremiah. Just like every man when the chips are down. Men, they don't know what love is. They're the takers of the world. Well, this is one little lady that's been taken for the last time. I'll tell you why Ezra wanted to walk out on me, Paladin. Because he was afraid. Afraid? He didn't know who Jeremiah really was until you had to go and tell him. I was doing my job. Oh, you sure were. So when Ezra learned who Jeremiah really was, he, he didn't waste any time making it clear that I wasn't worth risking his neck for. Oh, don't you see, Paladin, he was afraid. He was a coward, and, and I thought he was a man. A woman will do anything for a man, but... There's only one thing to do for a coward. Shoot him. So I did. I see. But it hasn't turned out badly, really. Jeremiah will be acquitted, and by the time he's free, I, I'll be gone out of his life. Gone? But he confessed to this murder to protect you. Exactly. To buy me, to put another bar on my cage. And how he'll use this to make me toe the mark. No, no longer I won't be here. Where will you go? I was, uh... I was thinking of San Francisco. You promised to show it to me, remember? I remember. Mm -hmm. And I believe you're a man, Paladin. You wouldn't be afraid of any man, would you? Not even Jeremiah the Avenger. Regardless of the question of my personal courage, there's a matter of my personal integrity. I happen to be in the employ of Jeremiah at the moment. Well, then quit as of this moment and take me to San Francisco with you right now. You amaze me. Don't you find me attractive? Oh, yes, very. I don't usually have to ask. I'm sure of that, but these are rather unusual circumstances. You won't regret it. You seem to have ignored a rather depressing fact. What's that? A murder has been committed here, and you are the confessed murderer. Oh, who knows but you? 
Oh, forget it, Paladin. Come on, let's get started for San Francisco. No. Uh, let's get started for town. You really mean it, don't you? I'm afraid I do. No. No, I, I won't let you. Keep away from there. No. He hung up his guns because I asked him to. So who has a better right to use them? I'll use this one on you. One gun for Ezra and one gun for Paladin. Drop it. <laughs> Drop it. You would shoot me, wouldn't you? If I had to. You are a man. Really a man. Don't shoot me, Paladin. Love me as I deserve to be loved. Take me away from here. Take me with you. I'll take you away from here, Polly. Oh, to San Francisco? That depends on where the judge wants to hold your trial. <laughs> Next time you refresh, enjoy a frosty, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Sociability, Charlie. All right, Kay, how's this? Pepsi is light, refreshes without filling. You like to refresh? Have a Pepsi right now. Well, offer it to everybody, Charlie. I will. Enjoy Pepsi at the fountain. It's delicious at home, too. Have one at lunch or with a snack. Charlie. At the beach or at dinner. Wherever you go, wherever you're thirsty, Pepsi is there. It's here, too, in our Be Sociable song. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi, drink light, refreshing Pepsi, stay young and fair and debonair, be sociable, have a Pepsi. For the weekend, have plenty of Pepsi around. Pick up an extra carton today. CK, I'm sociable. With Pepsi, everyone is. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Roth, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by William N. Robeson. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dopkin, Jack Moyles, Bill Idelson, and Lynn Allen. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. Thank you.